Hi everybody and welcome to today's video. So in today's video I'm going to talk about um, narcissists and vampires and where the tale of vampires actually came from. So we know that vampires, um, they suck the blood of other people in order to survive and also if you're bitten by a vampire then you become a vampire. So this is something that I recently sort of started looking more into because it seems that um, you know, a lot of people believe that narcissism develops in early childhood, which raises the question, okay, so if you are raised by narcissists and narcissism is like this contagious virus that spreads from person to person and, um, you know, can be transmitted through this abuse, this type of abuse, then are all children who are exposed to narcissists going to become narcissists? And, um... You know, there's like a lot of gray area with this topic because we know that when vampires bite people, they suck all their blood and the person either dies or in other mythologies, the person will become a vampire, just like the one that bit it. Um, so as far as why we, why, okay, so let's just go to how the virus is transmitted, this virus of narcissism. So what happens is that a person is abused by a narcissist and the narcissist continually devalues them and everything they believe in um, with this process of abuse. And the reason that this kind of abuse is so different than other kinds of abuse is because this kind of abuse is actually targeted for you to keep forgiving and um, letting them back into your into your energy, into your space, into your love, into your um, with your trust and your vulnerability and they just keep abusing it over and over and over again. So with other kinds of abuse, you know, there isn't this like weird pathology where one day they just like are constantly telling you how much they love you and how perfect you are and how you're the best anyone could ever ask for and how, um, you know, you are just this perfect being and then you think they're so great, you let them into your life, you trust them, you tell them everything, they're your whole world, etc. It's even worse if it's your parent, you know, because that's like, you don't even have a sense of self at that point, you're just a child, which is probably why this is more prevalent to develop in childhood. Um, so then the next second you trust them through your whole world, everything's great, and then all of a sudden they're just criticizing you, terrorizing you, you try to leave the room, they, they throw you on the floor so you can't leave and you have to listen to them terrorizing you. And especially as a small child, because um, psychological research has shown that children are more likely to dissociate than adults um, just because they have no other way of escaping the situation. And they may also, they may also be depending on the abuser, abusers for survival. So then we dissociate, which is um, really one way to describe soul loss or fragmentation. We cut off a piece of ourselves and it goes away. It either goes into a different reality where we can then go and retrieve it later, which is like the soul retrieval process that I was talking about in, my, in another video, in several other videos, or the narcissist will actually steal that part of our soul, which is like how they like suck your blood. And then of course they keep you in this like cognitive dissonance, the trauma bond, you love them and you hate them. Your head says they're not good for you, but your but your heart is like longing for them. And then it creates this bond where they're just constantly like siphoning your blood. And then before you know it, you've become just like them, empty, hollow, um, life is meaningless. It's impossible to find joy. You're depressed, you're anxious, you can't think clearly. You don't know who you are anymore. You've, you've lost your like entire identity because of this very specific kind of abuse that targets your soul and your life. It's like your life force. It's like whatever keeps you vital, happy, glowing, loving, forgiving, joyful, um, compassionate, empathetic. All these things have just been siphoned from you. Some of them have just gone off and fragmented um, to protect you. And other ones have actually just been stolen for the narcissist from um, by the narcissist. And then what actually happens is the narcissist, when they steal this part of your soul, you know, we can't really have other pieces of souls in our energy field or in our um, being. So what happens is when they steal this part of you, a, a part of them goes to you to sort of like make up for that like difference because like balance in all things in nature is always balancing itself. So because we can't have like extra pieces of souls in our, in our being, you'll get a piece of them. So now you've taken on some weird 
trait of theirs, either obsession, compulsion, depression, anger, wanting to hurt other people, contempt, um, rage, feeling like a victim is a really big one, feeling like a victim, and powerlessness. And now you are starting to take on these traits and they're becoming more and more like you and you're becoming more and more like them because you guys are switching pieces of energy or soul energy, it's the same thing. So it's, it's an extremely, extremely difficult process, but there is a way out of this hell that they've put you in. And, you know, it's really tempting to see ourselves as victims, but that'll actually keep us trapped in these, in this contagious virus longer than just like freeing ourselves from it. Because like any virus, if it goes unchecked for long enough, it'll just spread throughout your entire being and cause all these different other systems to malfunction because your body can only take so much stress and so much abuse before it starts to break down and your mind starts to break down. You, be, you start feeling suicidal, you become suicidal. And then it just seems like you will never be whole again. And it's really hard for people to get out of that mentality. Um, but the first step is, you know, getting away from this person, never talking to them again, blocking them just so they can't further abuse you. And then, you know, there's a whole, there's a whole process that comes after that that involves lots of inner work but if you just keep having faith that you can be whole again and that you weren't you you can also recover from the bite of the vampire and you can become um back to who you were loving joyful happy compassionate empathetic then you will and i'll i'm going to show you the way but in future videos Alright, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful and have a great day and weekend. Bye.